All right, welcome to our first lecture on the Git version control system. So we're going to get a bit of an overview of what version control is in general, why you might want to use it, what you might use it for, uh, and then we'll get into uh, Git in particular and some common uses and commands um, for getting started using uh, Git to version control your work, which will be used uh, throughout the course. So version control in general is a software tools for managing changes to any kind of files you might have, um, a collection of files in a folder, whether that's software or documents, anything you can store uh, as files and folders, uh, you can use a version control system to track. So the main idea for a version control system is you have some collection uh, of files and you keep track of those changes. So you often, for a given project, will have some central um, canonical storage of, kind of the the true uh, main version uh, of whatever it is you're keeping track of um, and then uh, contributors on their own computers will check out a copy of that they'll make changes um, and then they'll save those changes and share those changes either directly with each other or back to the central repository and then one of the main challenges that comes up here is um, let's say you've got two people who are both working on the project together at the same time, and they're both making changes, and then they both uh, send uh, those changes back to the repository. And this is called a, a conflict. Um, and often the system can resolve those conflicts automatically. For instance, if you're both working on different files in the same project, in which case there's no problem, it does the, the handles the merge itself. Um, and then there are also conflicts, for instance, if you're both editing the same part of the same file, the system may not be able to figure out automatically which, um, how to resolve those, bring those two changes in at the same time. And then it'll say whoever tries to send their changes in most recently will have to um, fix the conflicts um, and try to submit their changes again. So some of the things you might use this for, um, say you're an organization, maybe a, a class or a group of people, um, and you have some documents um, or software uh, and you wanna keep track of it over time. So maybe you've written a program, um, you know it works, you save that version, you keep working on new features and you realize something doesn't work. Version control systems keep track of all the versions throughout history. So every time you save a change, that is not replacing what was already there, but it's saving a new version. And that lets you do things like see the uh, version from last week or a month ago. Is it for software saying, you know, it worked last week, it's not working now, let me try running it again with the version from last week. The version control system lets you retrieve the old version. In the ca this case of it's it used to work and doesn't work anymore, it also lets you see the changes over time. So you can see that, you know, last Tuesday you made this change and that's when it stopped working. Get the version when it worked, but you can also see which changes are responsible for it not working. It's also useful for collaboration because of this, um, this conflict resolution and merging um, functionality. You know, if you, you might have collaborated on some uh, project by sharing files or folders around in emails, um, and that works okay as long as only one person is working at a time. But as soon as you've got two people making changes at the same time, then it can be a challenge saying, let me get this version, your version of this file and my version of this file and create the right version with the latest version of everything. In addition, you can also store and archive um, Git repositories because there are many uh, hosting services like GitHub. And so that's kind of version control in general. Um, Git is the current standard that most people use. It's the Git in GitHub. It's a fast, uh, decentralized, and open source uh, implementation of version control. The decentralized is important because there are, there are two kinds, two general kinds of version control systems. There are centralized ones where there is one true server where everything lives. Um, and then decentralized ones where really every copy of the repository is uh, created equal, which means that every time everyone who has a copy of, of the repository doesn't just doesn't have to consult the central server to get things like the history. Um, so older version control systems, the history only lived on the central server. And then when you checked out a copy um, that required talking to the server to get a different version or see the log or, or get different uh, changes and stuff like that. Whereas a decentralized uh, version control system like Git means that every time you check out the uh, repository, you actually have not just the current version, but also all versions throughout time. And that lets um, makes it easier to work when you don't have an internet connection and also makes it easier to migrate um, hosting from one uh, 
provider like GitHub to another one and also do mirroring and copies and everything like that. There are lots of ways to store uh, Git repos online with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and you can install Git by going to the Git website. And there's a great book, um, kind of the official book of uh, how to use Git and how Git works. Um, that's where a lot of our materials are going to come from. So now we're going to get started with creating our first uh, Git repository. So a Git repository is a folder um, that contains files that are being tracked. So um, anytime you want to track a folder and all its contents, um, you can turn that fold into a Git repository. And so we do that, we're going to get started by making an empty directory. We're going to CD into it, and then we're going to initialize it as a Git repository. So this just created uh, an empty Git repository, and it created this uh, hidden directory called .git. And so that's where it stores all the metadata and version information. So next, what we want to do is add some files. By default, it's not tracking any changes. So we are going to create a new file called myfile.py. So this first line um, creates that file, with which has print hello in it. Um, and then here's our first command that we use git for. We say git add. This is saying, this is telling git that it should start tracking this file, myfile.py. Then we can do ls to see what files we have. So right now we're in a directory with one file, and we've told git to track that file. So now we can create a snapshot of our directory by running the command git commit. And so commit takes a message. So this dash M is for message, which is saying we're saving an initial version of myfile.py. You can run this command and we can see some information. So we created on a branch master the commit with this hash. We'll get more information on this later. Here's our message that we typed, creating the initial version of this myfile.py. Um, and then it's telling us what it just did. So it's saying it saved one file that changed, um, which included you know, adding some content and it created this file, including some permissions. So now the life cycle of the status uh, of your file. So files in your repository can either be tracked or untracked. So untracked files are always left untouched. So you can, in your folder, not everything is necessarily saved. Tracked files are the files that Git is watching for changes. So a tracked file can be in a few different states. They can be unmodified, which means that the version in the latest commit is the version that you're currently looking at. They can be modified, which means that um, the version that Git has uh, stored, um, that you've made some edits since then. So it's the version that you see is not the same as the version that uh, Git has uh, saved. And then there's also a state called staged, which is, um, so when you're deciding to save a version, that's a two-step process. And what you do, the first step is called staging. So you stage changes by saying, this. that's what this git add command did in the previous uh, slide, it's saying, take these changes, kind of bundle up a collection of changes step by step, and then that's what the git add command does. And then commit says, take all those stage changes and then save it as a version of my repository. So you can see kind of the workflow of states. So you start, like when we had a new repo, um, we add a file and that takes that file from untracked and moves it into the staged state. And then we can create a commit, which takes that version that we've staged and then kind of saves it in permanent version for uh, stored in history. Then we're in the state where that file is unmodified. The staged version is the version that's stored in Git. Then we can edit the file a little bit and that moves it into the modified state. And then we can start making a commit by staging the file with git add and then committing it again. So the git status command you know, gives us a snapshot of uh, where we are um, at any given point in time. So here we can edit the file um, that we were just looking at. Um, and we can also create a new file. So we're uh, modifying the file that we already have tracked. And then we're also creating a new file called readme. And now we can see git status tells us what the current status of our repository is. They're saying on the branch master. And these are changes not staged for commit. These are files in the modified state. So these are tracked files that have changed since the last version. So it's, and then git gives you a little helpful uh, tips to say, if you want to stage th these changes for a commit, you can use git add um, to stage those changes. It separately, it shows you what are any files that are not tracked. So tracks, these are files that git has never seen before or that are not in the current version. So that tells you, git status tells you kind of what's currently changed and what might be added. You know, go down into more detail and say, what exactly has changed? And git diff uh, tells us that information. So git diff goes through and sees all the files in the modified state and then shows you the difference uh, in those files. So this is saying myfile.py has a change, which is adding this line world. 
So this black text is what was already there, and the green text is what I just added. So now let's create another commit with the changes we just made. So we can use git add to stage our changes. So this is the new file and the modified file. And then we can check git status again. So now it's different. Now we have a new file created, and we also have a modified file. So if we're satisfied with what we've done, uh, we can create a new commit with git commit dash m, just the same. And now we created a new commit with these changes. And here we can see two files were changed, and then one file was created. So now that we have a couple versions of our files, we can go into one of those first use cases for version control, and that's seeing the history. So every time you make a commit, Git creates a snapshot uh, of all the tracked files. So you can always see every version you've ever saved, and each commit is identified by a unique key, and each commit also refers to the previous version. So here you can see a visualization of the Git graph. So the kind of the current version that we're uh, looking at might be uh, this hash, and it has a parent sort of this version, it's the previous version, and then the version before that, and the version before that. So git log is a really useful command to show you the history of your repository. We have two commits. Top one is the most recent one. We'll talk a little bit about what these uh, words refer to, but this is kind of the current version is this commit with our message, and then there's also a previous version that had our initial uh, version of the repository. But how do we know which version we're currently looking at? So that's what this head pointer is. All these versions of history, so kind of we've got the current version, the previous version, and its parent, and its parent. And you can have many names that refer to any, any version throughout history. So head is a special name that refers to what you currently are looking at. So right now, I might be looking at this version, but my master branch might be referring to this version. And running git, git commit um, updates the head pointer to the latest commit. So if we do that log again, we can see head is referring to this version. Now that we've seen how to kind of see those changes over time, we can also get older versions. We can use git to take the older version and then change uh, what we're looking at in our current, uh, in our folder to be any version throughout time. And what that means is moving the head pointer. So head refers to what you're looking at right now. And if you use the command git checkout, you can check out uh, a version by name. So we can take that uh, older commit and we can check it out. And now we've switched to that um, old version, and then I'm getting a bunch of information saying we're in a detached head state. What that means is um, we're, we've moved head, but we're not on a branch um, anymore. So now we can do git log, and now we can see um, this all says, um, show me the log of all branches, not just the log uh, uh, from head. Um, it's saying that master refers to this commit, but now head is actually pointing to this commit. So now that we're on this older version, we can see that the readme file is gone, um, and we have the older version of myfile.py again. So if we look at the current files, it's only myfile.py. There's no readme anymore. Uh, we've deleted that file. And we can look at the contents of my file, and we can see it just has the first line that we added and not the second line. We can also move back to a later version. So we saw that master refers to the later commit. So we can check out master. That'll switch head back to pointing to this 7.7a commit, which uh, is the same as the branch master. And we can look at their files and see that the readme file is back and myfile.py is updated to the, the latest version. So a bit of a cheat sheet of uh, some, some of the commands that we've, we've learned. We've got init for creating a new repository, status for viewing the current state of things, uh, commit, um, dash, especially with dash a, is quickly create a commit with all the currently tracked files. We've got RM and MB for renaming and moving files if you want to change them. So we talked about what happens when you have a local Git repository and you're making and recording changes and hopping around in history. But most often, you're going to be working with code that either started somewhere else or that you're pushing somewhere else. So in this case, um, we're going to be working with a test repository at this URL. Um, and if, if you visit a repo on GitHub or some other public hosting site, there will usually be a button that says, you know, copy this command or URL to download a, uh, a version. In the case of Git, the command you use to download a repository is called clone. And so we're in our directory and we're pasting that URL that we got from GitHub and we're hitting git clone that URL and then we're going to clone it into a folder called my test. So what this does is it takes the repository and downloads not just the current version, 
actually downloads the entire repository, which means it includes all versions throughout history for this repo CD. And we can see that there's just one file in that repository called a readme. So now, just like we were doing earlier in our local repository, we can create a new commit uh, and push it to the remote. So this is what we've done before. We're making a main.py. We're telling Git to add it, add this new file to the tracked files, and then creating a commit with that new file. You can see now there's two files. We made a commit uh, with our message, and now there's two files, readme and main. And then the new command is push. So clone says, take a remote repository and create a local copy. Push means take any changes um, that I've made and push them to the remote called origin, which is the default, and the branch called master, which is also uh, the default. So now the new step that we've done is we made a local change. And when we made that, that commit, that commit only lived on, our, uh, on my laptop. When I do push, it says take that commit, send it um, up to the remote server. And at this point, if we visit that that page and we look, we'll see that there was a commit, our commit message saying add main.py is now on that remote server. And we can see that the file we changed is up there. And the corollary of push, so push means I took the remote repository, made some changes, and then push sends my changes to the remote. Pull is the opposite. Pull is maybe somebody else or I from another computer made some changes. Pull is I already have a clone, take any, any changes that have been made since I last cloned or pulled, and then pull the latest version. There can be conflicts if you're both working on the same files. Um, this may result in merge conflicts. It may also result in uh, just um, a merge commit. So your first assignment is going to be actually dealing with uh, some of these merge conflicts. So now just a quick reference of what we've learned about dealing with remotes. So clone is download a copy of the repository. Pull is get updates from that repository. And push is send your updates to uh, the remote. And the last concept we're gonna deal with is something called branches. So branches are lightweight copies of the main version of your files. So, so you've seen these arrows where a version points to the version that came before and each version points to the version that came before it. So that describes what's called a, a, a graph. Each version has a parent. You can have two versions that have the same parent, right? So you're starting from one version, uh, you clone on your laptop and make some changes and I cloned the same version and made some changes, we've both made new commits that started from the same version. And so you can think of that as branches on a tree. So we're gonna go through an example of that. So head, uh, we remember, is a special pointer that shows you where you currently are. So it's kind of the current version uh, you're working with. And master is our default branch that we created uh, when we initialized the repository. So the first thing we're gonna do is use the git branch command, where you give it a name for the new branch you want to create. So we're gonna create the branch called testing. And now what we've done is we've changed the graph so that we have a new branch called testing. It's still pointing the same version. Head is still master. See log, we can see we're still on master. Testing is also pointing to the same. Now checkout lets you switch from one branch to another. This is checkout is moving that head pointer from uh, one place to the other. So now we've moved head from pointing to master to pointing testing. The files haven't changed because master and testing both refer to the same version at the moment, but we're about to change what that means shortly. So now we can see that head is referring to testing. Master is also the same version, but we're following the testing branch at the moment. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a new commit, adding a file to the testing branch. Let's see, now we've got three files and now testing is one commit ahead of master. And we see head is following testing because that's the current branch. And if we look at the history, we can see testing is one commit ahead of master. And now we can switch back every branch. You can always hop from one branch to the other. And the current version uh, of the files will always reflect, reflect what branch you've uh, selected. So if we check out master, now we've moved the head pointer back to master. We haven't changed what testing is. We've just moved the head pointer back to master and reset the files to this version. The testing file is gone because we've switched back to the master branch. Branches can diverge. This is where the name comes from. You can have from one point, you can have many branches uh, of the history. So we're at the master branch and we can create a new commit just like we did for testing, but we're creating a new file. And now we've added a commit on master, but now testing and master are like siblings. They both have the same parent. We've added a commit in testing and we've added a commit in master and they're different. So master added the master file, testing added the testing file. And now we can look at a graph and we see these two branches diverge. So you can see they have a shared parent and testing created one commit on top of that and master created a different commit on top of that. And head, which is the current version we're working with is currently pointing to master. And merging is the final thing where you're taking two branches that may have diverged and you wanna bring them back together to one point in history.
we can say get branch to show us what branches we have. We can see that we have two branches, master and testing, and the little asterisk means we are currently on master. And we can do the get merge command, which creates a commit. So it has this message argument. I want to merge the changes from the branch called testing into the current branch, which is master, and then create a, what's called a merge commit, which is a commit that references two parents and brings them together into one. We're merging testing into master. These would have been conflicts if you were doing some kind of, you know, if you're doing simple email sharing or something, but get knows since we edited two different files, solving that conflict is pretty easy, so it did it automatically. And now if we do one last log, we can see that master is just one commit, and it includes, as a parent, testing and also the previous commit on master. So all the history of testing and all the history of master are now in one branch. And if we check the state of the files, we can see we have the master.txt and the testing.txt. So we've merged the changes from both master and testing into master. So our little cheat sheet for working with branches. So branch creates a new branch. Checkout moves that head pointer, so switching from one branch to another, which is what you're working on right now. And then merge takes the name of a branch and merges it into the current branch. That's all for today. There's a really nice interactive tutorial on Git at try.github.io. And then for more detailed uh, information about all the things Git can do and also how it works, you can find in the, the pro Git book that we linked earlier. Thank you.